Hello, Intro to Philosophy students. Um, it, this is a video pertaining to your section test two, and the first thing that I want to do is um, point out that I've changed the due date uh, for this assignment, uh, largely because I made you wait um, as long as I did uh, for your grades for the first section test. Um, my apologies about that, um, and it's just been an incredibly hectic semester, and I thank you for uh, your your patience with regard to that. Um, so hopefully this additional time for the second section test will be useful to you. Um, this test has to do with Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics and Hobbes' Leviathan. Um, so uh, it, you've been through one of these section tests. The due date for it is Friday, March 17th uh, by 12. Um, initially it was to come in on Monday uh, the 13th, so this gives you well over a week with this assignment. Um, so you've been through one of these, you know, about the boilerplate here, um, section tests, I define them. Um, so it, you, it, everything I post in Moodle and everything I say in class is fair game, as well as everything I told you to read um, for these assignments. But nonetheless, hopefully the questions will be um, straightforward. It's going to be five questions, um, what, two on Aristotle and uh, three pertaining to uh, Thomas Hobbes um, in, uh, do, 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 yep, that's what I decided to do. So um, it, that's what we're looking at. Um, so uh, there's a missed assignment policy. I say no late assignments uh, are to be accepted so that I get to come off as tough, but it, then basically I say, you've got to talk to me if you want an extension. Um, though extensions, given the extension I already gave you, should be very minimal. You should be in over a week able to find the time to engage with this assignment. Um, so, but the policy is if the sky falls, you have to contact me either before the deadline, I prefer that, or um, within 12 hours of the deadline. So you'll have till midnight on Friday, March 7th, midnight on St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> have better things to do on St. Patrick's Day um, it, in order to uh, negotiate an extension. Um, you know, the, those few of you who have availed yourself to this in the past, I'm pretty forthcoming um, with regard to these. Um, two things about submitting your assignments, you're uploading to Moodle. Um, it, first thing is it, make sure you properly upload to Moodle, like make sure you actually upload to Moodle and then make sure it's, it's, it's actually uploaded to Moodle. And secondly, make sure it's the right document um, uploaded to Moodle. Um, it, it, the idea is get it to me. Um, if you're freaked out, um, it, submit to Moodle and email. Um, I had a couple of issues with the first assignment where um, I couldn't open. It was a corrupt file name or something along those lines, uh, the one submitted to Moodle, and it was very handy for me to have the email submission um, as well. It's best to be sure. Never leave yourself without a backup, like my dad always said. Um, plagiarism, uh, also don't do it. Finger wag, finger wag. Um, effectively, if you're using uh, sources uh, that are undocumented or that you are passing off as your own work and they're not your own work, uh, you're in big trouble. I'm contractually ob obligated to pass um, your assignment on to the Dean of Students Office for assessment in a hearing if um, I discover this. Um, also, uh, just to help you with your cost-benefit analysis, um, uh, you fail the course, not just the assignment. Um, so uh, don't do it. We won't have any problems. You should have plenty floating around in your own head about this material. Um, if you are using other sources, tell me you're using other sources. Um, use those other sources only as evidence for your claims. If you're making a quote, then you have to unpack the quote. Um, etc., 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 and various other things I've already said. So, um, readings Aristotle, Nicomachean Ethics, Books 1, 2, and Section 1 of 3, um, Hobbes, Leviathan, though oddly I didn't ask you a question about Section 1 of 3. I thought I would, didn't. Um, and Hobbes, Leviathan, Chapters 6 to 19, um, and our discussion of uh, Hobbes. 
Video Material, School of Life, Philosophy, Aristotle, School of Life, Political Theory, Hobbes, and I added that podcast lecture um, for you as well. I'm not sure if you'd find it handy or not, but nonetheless, there it is. Short answer questions, um, a paragraph of writing. Uh, it, paragraphs defined as minimally three sentences. If you don't have three sentences, you don't have a paragraph and you've not met the it, it minimal requirements for the assignment, but your responses should be a substantial and exceed this minimum. Um, sentences meaning full sentences, if I have to interpret, that's the, that's the thing. Um, we're getting you to develop the skill to clearly, explicitly, and precisely discuss in your written work these abstract notions, ideas, and in some cases normative claims, right? So if I have to interpret, if I have to infer anything that's not in your response, it's not in your response, right? So uh, the thing is, it's, it, it, your responses should be clear, precise, and distinct. We're trying to turn the blunt language of, uh, 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 the blunt instrument of language into a scalpel, right? So and I don't know what's with all of my hand signals here, but it's, uh, anyhow. Um, so it, be precise. First question, four points each, total 20 points. Briefly discuss the function argument as discussed by Aristotle in Book 1 of the Nicomachean Ethics. How, by this argument, does Aristotle arrive at his definition of happiness? It's a fairly straightforward question, um, though I think an important one. Right. Uh, make sure you break down the structure of the function argument and make sure you understand that Aristotle is looking for something more general than uh, what it takes to be a good tailor or a good guitarist or a good flautist is the example he uses. Right. So um, or a good beer store guy, which is the example I use. I need to see the structure of the argument and how the argument leads to his definition of happiness. So, fairly straightforward. We've done that one to death. Two, in Book 2 of the Nicomachean Ethics, Aristotle defines virtue of character and discusses how it's developed. So, what do I want you to do? Define virtue of character and briefly discuss how it's developed. Right. So, Second part of the question, um, boo, 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 uh, where is it? In book two, section four of the Nicomachean Ethics, Aristotle identifies three requirements for genu genuine virtue in the section starting, but surely actions are not enough, page 22. Briefly discuss each of these requirements. I do not mean uh, deficiency mean excess. That's not what I'm talking about. I do not mean uh, the three part distinct. These guys all have threes. Right? You've noticed that already, I'm sure. I do not mean the three part distinction between feelings, capacities, and states. Though we mentioned states, right? I mean what's on page 22 for your Nick McKeon ethics. And for those of you that are relying on an online source or maybe not the same copy of the Nick McKeon ethics, that um, it's windy today. Uh, that um, that that I've required for this course. It's book two, section four. You should be able to find it there. I don't mean book two, is section three. I don't mean book two, section five. I mean section four. That's where you find it. So should be straightforward. Now on to Hobbes. Question three, Hobbes introduces a rather bleak account of human nature and describes the, quote, natural condition of mankind in detail. Briefly introduce each, right? So tell me what human beings are. Describe the natural condition of mankind. Um, briefly introduce each, followed by a discussion of how, according to Hobbes, the state of nature or natural condition of mankind arises as a consequence of his account of human nature. You're not just going human beings are the state of nature is, right? You're trying to tease out some of Hobbes' account of how human nature necessitates in terms of our natural condition, this state of affairs, right? So you're connecting these two ideas. Right. Question four. In chapter 14, 
Hobbes distinguishes between a right of nature uh, and the laws of nature. Define each. Now, note, I don't need you. There are like bloody 19 laws of nature. I don't need you to discuss all 19 laws of nature. I mentioned this because I've had students in the past discuss all 19 laws of nature. It's just too much. I, you know, you don't want to write it. I don't need to read it. Just so long as I understand that you understand that that you understand what a law of nature is, then we are good. All right. So. Um, Basically, the idea is it's probably a good idea to introduce the first law of nature. All right? Now, in the same section, in the same chapter, Hobbes introduces the idea of a covenant. Why are Hobbes, uh, covenants important to Hobbes' argument? Right? He introduces them as the convenient articles of peace. Right? What does he mean by that? Right. Now, finally, and we're relying on some video material for this. Um, I'll be back Friday to unpack this. Right. This is where we were going with um, chapters 16, 17, 18, and 19. Um, discuss the covenant that gives rise to the Commonwealth introduced by Hobbes in chapter 17, being sure to cite the covenant itself found on page 227. I would start your response by quoting it. It's right on page 227 of the Leviathan and reads, and I'm going to illustrate why I have a new copy of the book because this one is like literally falling apart, but um, page 227 the covenant, and I can do this from memory. It goes, I authorize and give up my right. Yep, yeah, here it is. I authorize and give up my right of governing myself to this man or to this assembly of men on this condition that thou give up thy right to him and authorize all his actions in like manner. It seems ridiculous that I'm giving you a point for just quoting that passage with the star next to it there. And here's the rest of my book. This is my old copy of the book. Everything's out of order now. Bugger. Right? But I'm giving you a point. If you don't do that, I dock a point. Right? So, quote, quote uh, that actual agreement. Right? From page 227. Right? Your task is to start by quoting it and then discussing, uh, discuss this covenant that gives rise to the Commonwealth. Followed by... Um, how this covenant, which establishes sovereign power, breaks down the distinction between public and private good in the person of the sovereign. In the person of the sovereign. Note, this isn't the too bad we're not bugs argument that we're relying upon. To a certain extent, what I'm asking you to do is take what's said in chapter 17 and follow it through to his argument in chapter 19. Right, where he discusses the inevitability when you have to share power of corruption. How, by Hobbes' argument, is a single monarch a sovereign figure, right? A figure in whose person, remember the definition, right? In whose person uh, this distinction between public good and private good is broken down, right? Now, on the first day that I was introducing Hobbes to you, to, to a certain extent, I already addressed this, right? In terms of in the person of the sovereign, for the sovereign, right? To seek privately for their own benefit is to produce the public good, or aim at producing the public good at any rate, right? How is that the case? That's the, the, the topic of this question. So, quote the, the covenant, discuss the covenant, and um, discuss this distinction of, uh, or this breakdown of the distinction between public and private good. All right. So, um, that is your, your, your test. Like I say, um, I have office hours on Friday. 
I have office hours on Monday and Wednesday, and I have office hours like right before this test is coming in on the following Friday, the 17th as well. Um, so uh, I've altered this deadline, not only to give you more time with the material, but to give you some access to me to discuss this material. So um, hopefully uh, this will be pleasant and acceptable for you. I look really forward to reading your responses on this difficult material. Um, it, it, it's, it, you should understand that Aristotle and, and Hobbes are almost like night and day. Right, uh, so um, it should be interesting watching you acquit yourself to um, this th these conceptual uh, descriptions and um, distinctions and understandings. Have good days, one for each of you, and um, I'll see you Friday.